So welcome to our series, the ongoing series on non-metros leading the economic resurgence, which is presented by E4M in association with Danik Basker Group. In this series, we reach out to sectoral leaders to get their insights on how non-metros are emerging as drivers of growth. And today we have with us Mr. Pankaj Gupta, Senior EVP Sales and CMO HDFC Life, who is going to share with us uh, how the category is, is uh, operating, how the category is functioning in non-metros. He is going to share some insights on it. Welcome, Mr. Gupta, uh, to this one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one discussion. Thank you, Rohel. It's a pleasure. Uh, my first question to you, Mr. Gupta, is that uh, there are a lot of, we have seen a lot of behavioral changes over the last six months uh, since the lockdown was there and, and then it was lifted. So I want to understand from you that what are some of the key insights as far as consumer behavior changes are concerned that have taken place in your category that has come out of the lockdown, especially in the non-metros? Well, it's a very interesting question, uh, given that almost all of us, as well as all the industries have been impacted severely by this pandemic. However, different industries have seen their consumer's behavior evolve in different directions. From the life insurance industry perspective, I would say that our product helps the customers in managing the risk in their lives. And the product is a safe haven for people who are facing uncertainty in other dimensions of their lives. From that perspective, what we have seen is that even in these tough times, the life insurance industry has seen that consumers have still maintained their relationship with the product and the category. So if you have to talk about some numbers and trends, uh, if you look at many industries, they had degrowth of 50% or 80% or 60% in this part of one. Life insurance industry had uh, just about a mid-teen to late-teen type of a degrowth, which is about 15-17% type of a degrowth. And that I would say goes to show the continued relevance of this product in managing the risk prevailing all around us. So that is one clear consumer trend that we have seen, that consumer is worried about the future. And when they're worried about the future, they would want to have a flight to safety in a way. And life right. insurance is one category that helps them in that. Right. Another big trend that we can really make out is the consumer's comfort with the digital channels. So for example, if I have to talk about the percentage contribution, percentage contribution of the digital channel in our own sales process has gone up from something like 5% to more than 10% in the quarter one of this year versus last year. And the interesting thing from the perspective of this discussion about the non-metros is that a lot of that growth is coming from non-metros. So while we have a feeling in our minds that digital customer is largely situation in Mumbai and Bangalore and Delhi, we have seen a lot of those customers coming to us from non-metros as well. So these right. two clear trends about the continued relevance of risk mitigating products. And secondly, the digital comfort that most of the customers have uh, today in dealing with their uh, providers. Right. You know, we have also seen that HDFC Life has tailored and segmented its products for non-metros um, and metro markets. So tell me what are the parameters that differentiate your offerings for non-metro markets? So we have a very integrated thought process when we look at any customer or consumer segment. When you look at the non-metro customers, there may be a couple of uh, stereotypes as well as a couple of real differences. Uh, one of the things that we have to be aware of is that the lower down we go in the population segment that we're talking about, uh, the need for lower ticket size products will be higher and higher. So one of the innovations we have done is that when we are going to the markets which are uh, non-metros, uh, we have a strategy on product side where the lower ticket sizes are viable and relevant and useful to the customers. Another relevance that we have created in the consumer mind is that uh, if our product is targeted to the rural segment, now some of the rural uh, population have huge farm dependence. So if the crops fail, their incomes fail. So we have products that offer premium holidays for up to one or two years so that even if the crops have failed, the policy continues and there is no loss of coverage for those customers. The third change that we have to look at is the increased relevance of regional languages. So what we have done is whenever we have come out with our regional marketing strategies, we have researched 
in a formal manner about what type of languages the customers are pre uh, preferring in those markets and that customer preference very interestingly in our observation might be different for an outbound communication versus an inbound communication it might be different for a for, for a written communication versus an oral communication it might be different for a formal policy document versus a customer service engagement so based upon the consumer preferences for the language that they want to be dealt with in we have modified our own channel and approach strategy accordingly and all of the collaterals that we have uh, enabling our sales team to engage with the customers in those regional languages has been a formal attempt that we did as part of a strategic project that we undertook across the organization last year right right so if we observe you know hdfc life has also placed a lot of emphasis on collaborations with players on the ground level Tell me, how has the move helped engage with consumers in the smaller cities and towns? Well, it's a very interesting question you have raised, and I would give you the perspective of why it is so critical to work with partners in the life insurance industry. Now, our country has probably five lakhs to six lakhs of villages, and uh, probably five thousand to six thousand of uh, towns and cities of uh, relevance to the uh, to most of the producers and service providers. our own industry life insurance industry has an engagement with a customer probably once twice thrice in their lifetime we are not a product that the customer engages with uh, three times in a month or five times in a month the way they might interact with their banking account or with their credit card account or with even with their telecom provider so for us the importance of working with partners who have the distribution strength in the entire country in and even in the smaller markets is very high from that perspective what we have done is we have taken a conscious strategy of signing up those partners who are strong in their own markets regionally so a couple of years ago reserve bank of india came out with a small finance banks and today uh, we were working with a major component of those uh, small finance banks who have strengths in their local markets as well as in other markets and with those partnerships we are able to reach out to a totally new customer segment and in a very cost effective manner in a manner which these small finance banks have learned over a period of time and uh, uh, the ability of our product to reach out to those customers who were so far under serviced has become uh, uh, much much better with that similarly we have a lot of deep engagements with microfinance institutions with non banking finance companies with payments banks etc who also have uh, the ability to reach out to the last mile in their own unique ways in their own unique markets right you know um, this pandemic has also led to a focus interest on health and i think it's going to stay here of course for the next you know time uh, and next 6 months or one year whatever tell me how has this translated in sales and how do you assess the consumer sentiment so when you look at the overarching concept overarching concept is that of protection how can a customer protect their family if something were to happen to them then the role is played by lack insurance another thing in the customer's mind is what happens if there is a health situation whether due to the pandemic or because of any other reasons which could be disruptive of their livelihood as well as income and expenses there the role of health insurance comes now in india there is a typical dispensation where health insurance products are provided by uh, all types of insurance players so general insurance companies stand alone health insurance companies as well as life insurance companies have different ability to provide different types of solutions in the health space we also have the ability as an industry to collaborate across partners so for example we have a collaborative product with hdfc argo which offers health plus term cover so what we have seen is these types of protection products which protect the customer on the health side as well as life side uh, the acceptance of those products has risen dramatically in these times having said that i would also want to put here is that there is one side which is the need side or the perceived requirement of a product and the other side is acting on that and acting on a need would be a function of how critical it is perceived to be and what is the wallet that the customer has and where they want to put uh, the portion of that wallet on what type of a consumption pattern they want to put in that wallet so i would say this is an evolving situation still while the need has gone up for protection of both life and health type of products we still have to watch carefully how it 
can be a long term sustained momentum rather than something driven only by the pandemic you know, there are also a lot of data and reports that indicate that non-metro markets are growing very rapidly higher than the metro markets. So tell me, how are you seeing the demand in non-metros vis-a-vis metro markets? So I would agree with the overall observation that the non-metro markets have the potential to offer higher growth. And there are a couple of reasons for that. If you see the way the markets and most of the newer industries have evolved, the first attempt is to service the metro markets. Now, there comes a point of time when the metro markets get relatively fully serviced and relatively saturated. Now, while life insurance is nowhere near saturation in our country, the fact remains that the smaller markets are even more underserviced. So the potential for growth in the smaller markets, because of the reason they have been underserviced and because of the reason there is a relatively lesser saturation is higher. Now, secondly, if you look at the current context, which is the pandemic context, what we are observing right now is that because of the good luck of having good rains this year, because of the good monsoons, uh, the rural incomes and the smaller in, uh, smaller cities have seen relatively better economic indicators than the metros. So metros had a huge uh, impact because of the immediate lockdown that we had and the reverse migration that we saw of many, many people leaving the metros. Uh, when we look at certain surveys and studies also, we saw the extent of disruption that happened because of the pandemic was more in the metros versus the non-metros. So all of these factors, uh, the income side, uh, the relative uh, under saturation, uh, the immediate context of the pandemic, all of these indicate that the potential for sales in the future is largely coming from the non-metro markets. Metro markets will remain critical they are even now, I would say, more than about 50% of the sale that we have. However, going forward, the growth rate that we are expecting in the non-metro markets could be higher. Now, there are a couple of implications of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Within life insurance, certain channels are channels where, as I mentioned earlier, we have the dependency on our partners, like the small finance banks and the other banking partners we have. However, there are other channels like agency channel, or even our online channel where we have a greater degree of control over how we expand and how we grow. Now in those types of channels, we have seen that the contribution from non-metro uh, markets has grown even faster. So agency business and online, as I mentioned earlier also, they have shown good trend. What it indicates to me is that the potential and the opportunity is there. How we reach out to that customer is up to us. And there when I see uh, how we take our strategy forward, I like to think of it as an integrated strategy. And when I say it, it is it as an integrated strategy, uh, what I mean is we have to have the right products for those markets. We have to have the right sales model for those markets. We have to have the servicing model so that the customers in those markets are comfortable dealing with their brand. We have to have the right claims management model. We have to have the right language strategy. And when all of these things come together, we will see much higher future growth from the tier two markets. Right. Mr. Gupta, tell me um, from an HDFC Life perspective, how important are non-metros in your market mix? And also, uh, what percentage of your sales is from the non-metro uh, sector? And do you see this share increasing as we move on? So non-metros, I would say typically would be about, uh, I, if I have to give an approximate number, about 40 to 50% of the market. And yes, as we go forward, I would expect that the contribution from these non-metro markets will keep increasing. Uh, now, when we look at life insurance industry, a uh, couple of numbers are very, very stark. For example, insurance density in our country, the life insurance density mm -hmm. is just about $55 per person per year. When you look at insurance penetration as a percentage of GDP, it's just hovering around three, 3.5 percentage points. These are very, very low numbers. In the future, if the growth has to come, and we also keep growing as an economy. The numbers do indicate that the criticality of the non-metro markets, the tier two markets, will uh, will be extremely critical in the success of uh, the players in this industry. Right, right. See, if we look at the current uh, market climate, the way markets are, and uh, if you have to look ahead, given this context, you know, where do you see the growth coming from? Also, looking at uh, the expansion plans of HDFC Life. Uh, 
how important are non-metro markets going to be in this current climate? So now if you look at a segmented approach, one of the geography that we are talking about, metro and non-metro, then we look at the life insurance industry itself. What is the role of the life insurance industry in the customer's life? If you have to broadly classify that, we are giving protection against mortality, where if somebody were to lose their life, the family is protected. We are also having the ability to give protection against morbidity. If there is a health situation, how is that dealt with? And then we also have longevity solutions where given that life spans are increasing and the retirement period of the life is going up higher and higher, how do you plan for an extended period of retirement? So earlier, if somebody were to retire at 55 and the life expectancy was 65, the retirement period was probably 10 years. So you plan yeah. for a retirement life of 10 years. Now, if right. life expectancy is going to go up and keep going up and retirement is about 55, 60 or a couple of years more, you might be looking at a scenario where some people have a retirement life of 15, 20, 25 and even more number of years. From that context, the importance of retirement solutions also goes up. Again, coming to the morbidity side, which is the health side, a very, very important trend we would see is that for many of the lifestyle diseases, which are prevailing now, uh, diseases like diabetes or mm -hmm. health, the risk of mortality may not be as, uh, very high, but the morbidity will continue. So people live with their uh, conditions for a long period of time. From that perspective also, planning for a situation where you live with that type of a, uh, type of a risk in your life is, uh, is very, very important. Again, on the mortality side, traditionally in India, there has been some type of a joint family system. So if somebody, some, somebody who is a breadwinner, something were to happen to him and it is a joint family, there is some type of a social support that is there. Right. Now that tendency is reducing. The trend of nuclear families is going up. And many of these trends are, uh, all these three trends are relevant for the non-metro markets also. So even in the non-metro markets, there are lifestyle diseases. Even in the non-metro markets, people are going to have a long retirement period. Even in the non-metro markets, people are have, going to have more and more nuclear families. And in that scenario, the role of life insurance for the tier two markets will keep enhancing. So one side is the relative segmentation between metro, non-metro. But when you look at the customer as a person and what their needs are, the relevance of all three of these solutions for the non-metro customers is also increasing because of the societal and demographic right. changes that we are seeing all around. So my last two questions. One is that, do you see the spike that is there in the market right now lasting for a certain period of time or will it become part of the consumer behavior for a longer time? I would say, well, it is a billion dollar question you are asking. Uh, consumer behavior is not easy to predict. And right now, because of the pandemic, uh, it is a salient question in everybody's mind about how to mitigate risk, how to manage the health uh, fears that people have in their mind. Having said that, I believe there has been a very sort of uh, uh, very critical awareness about the need for life insurance in everybody's mind. While Customer memory may be short. The reason this pandemic uh, has impacted many of us to rethink our plans, uh, and that it is an extended situation. It's not like happening for one week or two weeks and then going away. It has happened for six months already in India. My, yeah. my feeling is many of these trends will likely sustain the importance of uh, health management, importance of life insurance solutions will sustain in people's minds and we would see that uh, the low penetration percentages, the low insurance density in our country will get some type of a positive momentum going forward. Having said that, we have to all keep watching it. Our role as marketeers, as business people, to make sure that our products are relevant to the consumer. We are communicating about the benefits of product in a manner that is relevant and that is understandable by the consumer remains very, very high. Life insurance as a category is sometimes difficult to understand by the consumers. Uh, and it is the responsibility that we have as an industry also to make sure that in the future we communicate our benefits uh, much, much better. Right. 
my final question is that uh, what are the challenges and opportunities that, that lie ahead for the insurance sector? Also, uh, what does the year look like for your category? So I would say there are a couple of challenges that we can clearly see right now. The most critical challenge is uh, we are seeing a GDP contraction right now. If you look at quarter one results, uh, Indian GDP contracted by something like 23%, which is a very right. major dip in GDP. And GDP dip, mean, GDP dip means that incomes have declined for many of the people. That is right. one thing we have to remember. Then the unemployment rates shot up dramatically in April, May, June. Since the time unemployment rates have come back, uh, there has been a little bit of an improvement. But uh, the incomes have still not kept pace. Incomes are still impacted for many of the people. Third factor is the fear factor. Uh, when I say fear, it is also about confidence in the future. How fast that comes back so that people have the willingness to spend money, not just to keep their money for a future which is looking uncertain. So we are in the middle of uh, each one of these trends uh, that we have to watch out for. On the positive side, the digital adoption has been a true success in this entire pandemic. People have worked in spite of the glitches that we have seen in today's conversation. Digital has largely held up and we have been able to work, we have been able to be entertained, we have been able to be socially connected in spite of the pandemic. So digital digitization that we have seen right now, digital adoption that we have seen right now, will have long-term positive consequences in the way services and products are delivered to the customer. So the rest of the year would be a mix of how these various factors play out. As I said, in the life insurance industry, we have already started seeing a little bit of growth coming back. Uh, uh, if I remember the numbers correctly, in July, we grew as a company by about 12% on a very high base of growth that we had last year. So the numbers have already started becoming positive for the life insurance industry. If the trend continues, for the year as a whole, we should be fine. That's Thank how it is looking like for the entire industry and for us as well. Great. Thank you, Mr. Gupta, for your time and uh, speaking to us and sharing your insights. It has been a great discussion. It has been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks.